isometric basics. Um, I will try to go over the just main main things, main aspects of the object you're trying to draw, and. And again, when we refer to isometric, it just means all the angles are the same, okay? So, I'll write that down, all angles. In other words, if you had something as regular as a cube, um, that just means that this angle and that angle are the same, okay? Uh, the third dimension is always a vertical. So for your basic sketch, you always want to keep the vertical vertical. So whatever it is you're drawing, just keep one, one axis being vertical in relation to your drawing uh, sheet. Okay? And what you're doing is you're really squishing your object in some dimensions but not the others. Right? So we talked about, again, if you have a cube, even though this and this and this are the same, that's not true for the diagonals. So these diagonals all of a sudden are like this and like this, and I don't know what the symbol is for different, but so these two are different. Uh, so you always have to kind of play with that. <coughs> But because of that, you always you go back to your known dimensions as a reference point, right? So if I want to know, you know, if I have a square, let's say, and let's say I have So I don't know if this is a good example, but let's say I want to do this grid. One way to do this grid here is to well, we know that's the center, so I would just do this. And now, because of this principle of diagonals, I could even use more diagonals to determine the other center here. So I could do that. Um, so what I'm using is, in this case, I'm using diagonals. Uh, I could also measure. I could measure these points, right, and say these are all one quarter, and I could just transfer that over here. Okay, uh, most of your objects have curves and we just, most of them probably have round curves that are like sections of circles. So once again, when you draw those, if it's an iPod and you've got your wheel here, uh, imagine that you have, what if you had like a really thick iPod? Okay, so there would be like a cylinder that this wheel belongs to. It's kind of a slice of that cylinder. Okay. So when you draw this circle in oblique, um, this main axis is the length of your cylinder. I mean, the short axis rather. The long axis goes opposite that at 90 degrees. Okay, so that means that if you use these angles, and I'm repeating this because some people are still struggling a little bit with that. Um, in your case, the cylinder now is going this way. So let's find out where it is. Maybe it's there. So I draw a vertical. That's my main direction. So my circle, my ellipse, is going to be aligned with these two axes. Okay. And first, probably, I want to determine where it is, so I will draw that. Um, in this case, also, if you use 30-30, your other axis is also going to align perfectly with your corners, which is nice, right? It's, it makes it a little easier. Uh, and then you draw your lips there. Okay. If you use slightly different angles, so let's say I move this angle maybe up a little bit and maybe this one down a little bit. Uh, now let's see what happens. It gets a little tricky. I still use parallels to determine where my kind of enclosures are. So let's say my circle fits there. Uh, 
my verticals for now, for, for your first view, you just want to keep the vertical the same. So my vertical is still there. But now what will probably happen is as I draw this line, uh, I'm cheating a little bit, but I just want to show that don't get upset by the fact that all of a sudden this other line doesn't match these corners. That's okay, it's just because of the nature of of the way we are, and this should have been here. Um, but you still want to draw your lips following that these two axes. Okay? Um, think of any circle on your object uh, as a situation in which you have to redraw it obliquely and if you have to do that it's, it really pays off to just first determine how big they are you know how they are aligned and so forth so if you have your little elevation which you, you should have from the drawing which I just realized uh, you might need that drawing I'll, I'll get back to that um, so just transfer this construction onto your oblique view, because it's a way of keeping track of things. Okay, so let's say there's a square there, a square there. And it's, it's just, just practice, practice, practice. So now I can do this, do that. And then I just pick up what I need from these sections. Right? And then I connect them. Okay. Um, so that you know, you might, you know, you might adjust this and you might make it looking better or, you know, if there is complex curves, you can adjust it later, but at least you know what the basic uh, structure is. Um, and to build, if you have a knife of four, you're kind of in luck because it's an easy slab, right? It's, it goes straight up and down, right? It's a rectangle with squared, uh, it's a prism with squared, uh, I mean with rounded corners. Um, so let's just do that example really quickly first. Again, still you want to you still want to have always this reference because that tells you, okay, I'm doing a little bit off, but at least I know, okay, that's like one-sixth of the toll, okay? Just helps me keep track. Okay, so let's see, I'm going to draw it quite big. So right there, if I know that's one six, that's easy to break up, right? First I break it in half, and then I eyeball, and I get my two other divisions. And then on this side, I just repeat it. Okay, so now let's do... Now, how do you draw the bottom one? The bottom one, you extend your dimension. So let's say it's this thick. And you could draw, you know, everything else again, twice. Um, but another way to do it is you can simply extrude it down or up, depending, probably down. Let me just do it even bigger. I'll just, I'll just blow up a corner here, okay? So now I, I, I pick my dimension from the corner here, from this imaginary corner, okay? And I say it's about that. 
So here's where tracing paper really comes in handy. You simply uh, draw your original and then you just slide it down. Let's see, let me help a little bit with that. Okay. And then you just draw the other part. Um, and, and again, keep maybe these lines just to to have your curves, you know, make sense with where, where they stop. Um, if you have a comp much more complex object like like the iPhone 3, then it gets a little tricky because uh, you have a curve on the on the sides, right? The side is like that, maybe. So what you need to do is you still need to approximate. You need to say, okay, I have a line that's maybe, maybe that's a circle. And maybe this is, you know, I could almost imagine that's like a bigger circle, okay? That, that's an oversimplification, but for your purposes, it might be enough. Okay. So let's do the same on this side. So what happens is you have a curve here, and that's my dimension there, and a curve there. So you need to build this up. Actually, you have three. You have three spots. Okay, so you might have one, two, and three. And you just need to build it up by, la by layers. So let's see if I can show that, keeping it on the same frame. Um, and here I can record what my points are, right? My height. Okay. So what I would start is by a box that is this height, right? By this width. So whatever that is. Okay, let's say it's like that. And here I, I measure this guy right here. So let's just say that's maybe two thirds or a little more than half. So maybe I position that there. So as you can see, I'm starting to build up, you know, my layers. You have to kind of see it sort of in x-ray vision at first and then you get rid of that or you just leave them as construction lines. Um, the top one, it's further in and it's on this layer. So actually we could call it like layer A, layer B, maybe layer C. So this would be B, C and A. So layer A, it's smaller. So whatever that is, you would have to Much. It's, I'm exaggerating, but let's just. It's a new iPhone, um, and now I'm gonna I'm gonna do these lines pretty thick. Even though in your drawing you want to leave them uh, light, because you're really still building it up. And I'm showing it as if it was somewhat kind of like exploded, right? Okay, so this will be an exaggerated curve. Um, and then I would have something else below, which I probably won't even be able to see. So let me let me just forget for that for now. For now, um, so I'm just going to build my circles here. Um, what I'm trying to sort of show is that it's really going to be hard to show this curve here in oblique because it's a curve that composed in part of top views of the phone and in part of side views. And so where does one end and where the other one starts? So the squares on this other layer are a little bigger, right? I'm rushing a little bit here, but let's see where we are here. So here, of course, I won't need it. Um, 
So let me see if I can now. Uh, you probably again don't want to darken these uh, until you're ready to kind of go with your with your final. And you use contour lines. We talked about contour lines. So here, the easiest thing is to simply connect this, right? Just like that. And here too. So that doesn't really give me a great sense of the curve, but if I put a contour line here, I could start getting somewhere, and maybe one even in the middle here. Um, so f for the sake of the drawing, let's just say that this is not as, as narrow. Let's say it's a little bit bigger so that we can see a little bit, maybe. So maybe there is another one there. Maybe there is another here. Now here, that's the good part because as soon as I stop here, I can kind of connect. Yeah, it's, a, it's definitely a funny version of an iPhone, but you get the idea. Okay, yeah, we should, we should really use contour lines whenever possible. So what I did is I just built, you know, one, two, three layers, almost like a 3D printer, and, or like a wireframe, and I connected them all. So let's just take a piece of trace. Uh, don't worry too much about, you know, like all the details in your objects because, you know, you're never gonna you know, finish it if you put every single little thing. So this could be, I don't know, a bar soap or something. So notice that even though, um, trying to think, this, I can't remember, I think this probably should be the same thickness here, but. Uh, okay, so that's, that's looking okay, right? Uh, so in other words, you build all your layers and then on these edges, which you cannot really define, you just connect and you, and you round everything. Um, let me just say something real quick about your views and how, even though everything is possible when you draw something, you do, you know, you do have certain limitations. So if you were to change your angles like to a really, you know, almost flat, right? This one now is so close to my horizontal that I could almost say that this is a square, right? So if, let's say if I take this eraser um, and let's say I draw it normally. So, like, by the way, close one eye and take a look at it and you can really flatten your view, right? Uh, yeah, let me just orient it so that it looks... So if you, if you close one eye you really can start perceiving this in the way that it really is showing in your drawing. Okay, so you see these lines. Uh, it's a really, really good exercise. Um, so we talked about moving this line this way and this line this way. Now, you can do that, but the more you do it, the more this version is going to approach a, um, a square, right? And if I move my my object so that I can see this almost as a, you know, if I lower this, see, when I get to this point, you really cannot see this anymore, right? You can see it very little. So, it really is a little bit of a, I should I say, of a, of a lie to do, you know, to do this view that would be maybe like this, and then in other words, this line would have to really move a lot, and it would be more like this. So in some drawings, what you'll see is something like this, which 
you could say, hey, that's okay, right? Because it's because it's an oblique, we can we can pretend that that's good. It's a little bit too extreme because again, you wouldn't see you wouldn't see this much if my angle is you know almost almost flat with the horizontal. So keep that in mind, okay? Um, okay. The last things I want to say is that on one view, just do where you keep your one of the verticals, verticals, so let me see if I can show this, yeah, so just like that. Um, on another view, you can have it where none of this is actually aligned with the side, so that if I were to turn this drawing and say I want it like this, you probably would say, well, this is not lying on any plane, this is kind of like floating, floating in space, which is okay. So let's see, that would be, yeah, about like that. And that's, and that's true in fact, right now, my, you know, my surface right here, there's nothing that aligns with this. Okay. Uh, and by the way, to do your second view, you could cheat a little bit and just take your first drawing and just turn it, you know, any way you want. But what I recommend is that for your second, uh, just change the, change the angles a little bit, you know, maybe do a view that is more foreshortened so that you kind of really truly see one side much more than the others. So if I were to draw this, let's just say, like that. Okay, it's a challenge because of course, you know, let's say if this is a phone, um, you know, you have lots of room to put your, you know, maybe this is your, you know, your stereo jack there or whatever. But then, you know, say if you have a keyboard here, right, that gets really messy. Um, but that's the challenge, okay? But the principle, you know, these principles of doing your layers apply here as well. So if I wanted to do this really right, I would still build up all my ellipses. So again, I would do, you know, this is the direction of my ellipses, of the, of the short axis. I would build them here. And then I would try to draw my ellipses opposite that axis. So this would be a series of circles going this direction. And they get really, really narrow. And so, you know, of course you have to just sort of play with it a little bit and see what you got. But, um, but that's the way to do it. In other words, just because your drawing is now very, um, you know, you're seeing very little, doesn't mean that you have to kind of go astray in terms of these axes. So whatever these ellipses is, even if it's really, really shallow, you really have to try to draw it like this. Don't, you know, don't go like that and whoops, and now I'm like way off because because my curve should start here, you know, if that's, if that's how big it is on this corner, it has to be the same size on this corner. So it's a much shorter ellipse. Um, okay, that's for sh regular shapes. Now, some people are doing things like a hammer. Um, start with your basics. So a hammer is probably, you know, a cylinder, the handle. Right? But then, you know, somewhere along the line it gets narrower. So it gets a little tricky, but... I think here it becomes, I think, more or less a circle. So let's say it's a circle there. Um, so it gets much more difficult, but you can imagine that if I were to cut this into a, a more, you know, from a shape that's like this to a shape that's like that, how would I do that? Um, it's still somewhat of an ellipse, but now I'm confined by these sides. So maybe it goes like that. Okay. And then you can also just play with your 
mean, there's no way you can draw everything, right? Um, actually, this is probably another circle that's probably still a, kind of an oval. Uh, but even here, you can see how uh, you can use contour lines to, to kind of give that sense of uh, changing contour, okay, changing shape. Um, in anything you do, you should look at your um, at your um, orthographic. Um, and actually, maybe what we'll do at the end of class is we'll we'll record, um, you know, the, the fact that you guys are on time, and maybe we'll just let you keep it because it might be good to refer to that. Um, so something like this, okay. First things first, right? So you just block it off and you say it's about two squares. So I draw my shape here and I draw two squares. Uh, by the way, I recommend you guys doing this kind of sketching before you're doing, you know, the one you're going to turn in to practice, right? So now, you know, you could almost do a grid and do that kind of thing, almost like drawing by the numbers, but let me get a little tedious. Okay, so you can see I'm, I'm kind of not just following, you know, really rough and probably too tall, right? Because now all of a sudden my hammer is, is, is not, you know, it's just way too tall. I probably have to drop that whole thing, but... Um, But that's where tracing paper comes back in handy. Now I can just um, um, to reposition that in the correct spot because really it's going to be here. That's my center, but then that's too high. So let's just quickly do as if the hammer was kind of a flat piece. Again, I just take my, I move it down to there, so I go like that, and I just repeat my shape. Okay, so that's about the shape of my hammer, but now my center is really here, right? So I move that down. It's a little out of proportion, but then you can start, you know, adjusting it a little bit. Okay, so that starts to be, you know, something. Uh, then you could go back in and say, okay, but now that's really an ellipse. So how does the ellipse go here? This is my direction, right, of a hypothetical cylinder that's, you know, going this way. So I draw that, I draw this, and I draw my... And I know there's two of them, or rather I know that it's maybe like that, and maybe a little bit smaller, oops, a little bit smaller. So it's getting a little messy, but... But I can always go back to my tracing paper, right? Tracing paper again. I don't have a hammer, a hammer in front of me now, so my proportions are probably looking a little, a little funny. Uh, and this, of course, was going that direction, right? So it's like that. And when you have a curve that connects to maybe another curve or a curve to a straight line, you might want to just leave it kind of slightly, you know, not completed to give that sense of, you know, things changing. So now, so now I'm going to just realign this to my original hammer thing. 
it's really important to keep your you know your kind of main axis together because if I put this here well that's obviously wrong right so I just have to you know more or less figure out where it would be so it's about there it's a little big my handle okay One last thing, there's someone who's doing an object that it's regular, but it has many faces, so it's the coffee pot. Um, and uh, again, in, in her case, it's, a, uh, it's an octagon, okay? The base of the coffee pot is like that. So this turns out actually to be quite simple, because I can... Um, It's actually different that. Uh, yeah, I have to do something else. I realize, I forget the name, but I realize that what we're drawing is this. Uh, so now I rotate that and I just replicate this view. Before we just did this, we just drew our, and maybe I should just redo it so I remember, and then we just picked these points um, because the, the dia because the diagonals at the median give us exactly the divisions. We just picked those along along this circle, okay, and this gave us the the shape of the pot. Oh yeah, no, it's correct. Yeah, yeah, it's correct. Okay, so this is what we're drawing. So this spot is this spot right there. Uh, and then you would do the same, you know, maybe above, maybe it's a little bit smaller. Get my tracing paper again so I don't get too messed up. in terms of wireframes, right? So with that, you can connect everything. And I start seeing something. I mean, you know, if you had an amazing eye, you could try to do a, a still life drawing and you could probably get it just right. Um, it's a lot harder though because, um, and then so forth and so on. Now in her case, you know, it, it, it goes up a little bit and there's a cylinder, cylindrical part there. And so these, these things actually become round because they become part of that, of this conical shape right there. And there's another one. And you just build it up like that, okay? In any case, every time I'm just building these, these layers, right? So that would be that layer, this layer, this layer. The exploded view it's nothing but just taking the parts and putting them on top of one another, making sure that they align, right? Uh, that's right, sorry, let me just spend two words on that. Okay, so let's assume for a moment that, that this object has got, for the sake of argument, just three pieces of metal that go, you know, and then 
and then everything is around it or whatever. So one, two, three, the way I would do it is simply this way. You, you establish your verticals and then you just draw them one by one. And that's why tracing paper is really great. So if you get your isometric in really good shape, doing the exploded is really, really easy. So the second one would be here. I'm going to move it up and maybe it's right here. You could show it a little bit behind, maybe with a light line. And then the third one is this. And maybe you keep your distances kind of even. Okay, it's so nothing much to it. I mean, you know, don't break your phone again <laughs> to show what you know what's inside. But um, but try to place your you know your shapes logically, right? Whatever is on top should be on top. Whatever is at the bottom should be at the bottom. If there is, you know, if this is a piece of glass and it fits maybe into this other part, you know, then you would show that here, right? You would show the same shape aligned in the right spot where it fits in, right? 